Hello everyone and welcome back to Seeker's Journey, here with the Berry Petal Tribe, which as time goes on is slowly but surely not really made up of many berries or many petals anymore, uh, especially because our beautiful strawberry here, who is actually one of the nichelings on the island, who's considered one of the most beautiful due to her very um, reversed strawberry pattern and her strong scent of berries that she carries uh, it's beginning to die out actually she she's one of the few berry nichelings left and we don't really have a lot of berry nichelings left we do have her daughter mulberry and we do have camembert here who smells a little bit of cheese and berries but otherwise we have mostly patterned nichelings and we have mostly peppermint nichelings left so i think that something very interesting is actually happening to our tribe right now you guys and as time goes on and we continue to explore the island and attempt to unlock more genes as we wiggle our way up north so that we can jump onto this grassy plort we may actually see a change from being the berry petal tribe and we might take up a new name we might become the rune tribe the rune stone tribe made up of these beautiful pattern nichelings who remind me a lot of beautiful rune stones and kind of like the the hieroglyphs that you would see uh in like ancient egyptian art they're very very beautiful or maybe like some of the uh, the hieroglyphs from maya art for instance mayan art so that's kind of what they remind me of so we've got like rune stones going on over here we've got the peppermint little group going on over here malari herself is actually a strong berry scent but she did have ramon who smelled strongly of peppermint as her mate so i feel all of her children smell of peppermints and we're just gonna have to see which one of the different branches that we're starting to have of our tribe ends up taking over and taking control genetically as we start wiggling our way up north right now we are still continuing our attempt to unlock a few of the berry or excuse me a few of the uh, wonderful smell related genes that we can have we've already unlocked big nose thank goodness but another thing that we are looking into unlocking is actually toxic body because we're saying that one of the big problems that the berry petal tribe has run into is the fact that the toxic berries do smell pretty darn interesting they're really getting attention of a lot of the young nichelings especially who are super curious and that just smells really good and they all want to start nibbling on it but the toxic berries will kill a nicheling who does not have the poison fangs the toxic fangs in order to eat from them and we have not unlocked that yet nobody in the tribe has active poison fangs and so every time we eat from the toxic berry bushes although we get a little bit closer to unlocking the toxic body gene which is one of our goals for the the seekers journeys we want to be able to unlock all of these genes except for the the uh, little round ears apparently we absolutely cannot unlock round ears which is kind of a bummer but we'll talk about my plans for that in the future but uh, I actually think that this is something we're gonna address because we're all about seeking out new smells and I think those toxic like berries probably smell irresistible to our nichelings so I do think we're going to try to kind of carry this tribe through to unlocking this until they can start destroying the tempting berries and I really feel like the young nichelings in particular would be super vulnerable to any time they smell a a delicious toxic berry bush trying to eat from it but we have something very interesting right here with this healing fruit and i'm wondering if when a nicheling eats a toxic berry if they could turn around and eat a healing fruit and recover as a result so this is an experiment i've never done this before we're gonna have to see if it could work but i really feel like malari even though she's trying to keep all of her children in check and really trying to make sure that they all behave themselves she's grabbed avon over here trying to get him to pay attention to everything she just isn't able to keep a track of her troublesome identical twin boys and we're gonna have moronu try out a toxic berry dun 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 moroni what have you done and now he is poisoned and he could possibly die if we don't do something about this he has however gotten us one step closer to unlocking toxic like the toxic body so i feel like his mom would jump over she would probably start freaking out she'd be like look at this this thing also smells weird if you're gonna be eating weird things try try eating this and does it heal him oh no it doesn't 
I truly thought from the bottom of my heart that it would heal him when he's poisoned. <gasps> what have we done? What have we done? At least we did it with the identical twins. Twins, twins. So we literally have his genes in a second. Nicheling, nicheling, nicheling. Oh dear. <laughs> All right, so this sucks, but um, yeah, we do need to get toxic body somehow. And I feel like little Zamai, their mother Lilium is sort of loosey-goosey when it comes to parenting and I feel like she's sort of just a mysterious creature of the swamps uh, for unknown reasons. So I feel like little Zamai might also be one who could potentially end up um, could potentially end up eating those toxic b berries but do we want to keep his D and F immunity? A and G uh, what about do I have any unrelated females up here? I do not A and C. Wow actually Zamai yeah, we want to keep Zamai. Well, actually, Zamai does have hemophilia. He does have the D and F genes, though. E and G, D and F. And actually, he might make a good mate for Magnolia because they both have claw. So I don't know. We'll have to look into that. D and F, though. D and F with radish would make more sense, I think, um, because they, yeah, he doesn't have hemophilia. He's got higher fertility. Yeah, okay. So we're going to have little Zamai sadly and unfortunately also try out the toxic berry uh and have little radish be quite upset and concerned about what to do with his little brother but i need to unlock that so we have to make some sacrifices guys and hopefully we can get this over with soon and we can get some stronger nichelings in here to destroy those toxic berries and get rid of them lilium's just like discovering things over on this end of thing uh this end of the island but I do think Radish would be super upset about this. Not really sure about what to do. Just trying to take care of his brother. Uh, and maybe actually being able to do a little bit of fishing. Radish has really high fishing. Well, no, he doesn't. He has really high collecting. So we'll figure out what to do there. All right. And speaking of trying to become stronger to be able to figure out how to get rid of those toxic berry bushes, that's actually the job of this side of the island, the administrative group who is responsible for taking care of uh, trying to trying to make sure everybody on the island is taken care of, that there's enough food for everyone, and it's been proving to be very difficult to do because Viu and Runini are struggling with a rabbit influx. All of these rabbits have been raiding. Oh, there's some Dodomingo meat right here. Oh my gosh, it's so tiny. But all of these rabbits have been raiding the island and so they're trying to train their children who are going to be taking over the administrative duties on how to chase the rabbits away. And over here, Bush has impressed, impre uh, excuse me, Bush has impressed, his name's a little tricky, impressed the lovely strawberry with his abilities to scare crabbits to death, possibly with that derp snout of his. And so he's got a, the crabbit out of the way and is kind of helping her to tend to the nest area. But I think strawberry is a little startled. She's still willing to give him a little bit of romance, but I do think she is a little bit startled because their child, Vanku, uh, who we're going to rename in just a second here, uh, let's go ahead. Ooh, uh, ooh, there's some really good names in here. Let's go ahead. We're going to name this little one Falkri, which I really like. What a cool name. But Falkri, which apparently means calm hearted. Thank you very much to you who have submitted this awesome name for our Nishling name list. But he's a really good collector, but he is patterned. And that means he's a planner. And that means that a Strawberry will just very gently hand him over to this group and kind of be a little confused about how she had to collect her child when in the past she has had the absolutely lovely, absolutely stunning, absolutely sweet smelling mulberry who has just won the heart of camembert who will dive in and who will sing her poetry and all sorts of praises saying he's never seen such a gorgeous nicheling before and she will thank him for that and then try to chase the dodomingo out of the way make herself very comfortable and have found this very poetic man who also happens to have a nest and a berry bush so he's got everything a lady could want and apparently the skill is to be able to dig things up and he's also got web tied legs so we'll have to see where that goes uh, mulberry do i want you to mutate anything specific i don't think so 
we might just kind of step back and see what their children might have. I think if I wanted her to mutate anything specific, it would be Big Nose. So we're going to go ahead and give her a Big Nose. And Camembert, if I wanted him to mutate anything specific, um, maybe Digging Paw? Or Claw. We'll go ahead and give him Claw because he's always playing in the water. And maybe we want to try to increase that chance for like a fishing ability to child. All right. And then over here, Magnolia is really into hunting bunnies. And I think I smell a bunny. So she's been trying to like track down the best places to hunt bunnies for ages. She's kind of an undercover bunny herself. I really think it's so interesting how she was born with all white fur, even though she's not albino. Uh, and I just love the idea that she likes trying to chase down all those bunnies. But all right. Yeah, we do have the painful, painful event of having to feed toxic berries to some of our babies. I didn't know it would make them poison for the entire rest of their life. I thought maybe if we had him eat a healing plant that would help out. But I think that that would startle his brothers away from possibly following in his footsteps. So Moroni is going to be one of the identical twins to eat toxic berries. And so is some little Zamai down here uh, left unsupervised because Lilium's not really, to be honest, she's not really much of a mom. But he's been left unsupervised and will eat the toxic berries. But hopefully between the two of them, we'll be able to get this done. We'll be able to have some nichelings who can destroy the bushes and they will no longer be addictive to the young babies. So, hmm, Clary is really going to have to think about what she wants to do. So there we go. And we'll have Huckleberry jump over. I think he would be excited to find a big tree. Uh, and Kalari, who's big and beautiful and smells of peppermint, and so I think has won Huckleberry's heart. We might try seeing what they might potentially have for babies. And, you know, nuts aren't the most exciting thing in the world, but I almost wonder if... Kalari, like having her little brothers possibly all eat and die from these toxic berries to unlock toxic body for us, would make her believe uh, that maybe berries were a little dangerous and we might start seeing a sharp veer away from the berry obsession from this tribe. Maybe it'll just be things from trees and that would explain why they might want stinky fruit. Who knows? We'll just have to see. All right. Meanwhile, Mina and Romumu uh, Romu here are just kind of free-spirited nichelings. They're completely plain patterned, so they aren't really associated with uh, any particular part of the tribe. They aren't really associated with any particular responsibility. So they like to just kind of jump around and have a great time. And Parmesan is on the search for a male who smells really, really good to her and basically doesn't share the same genes. So she is constantly searching for a new mate. Oh, she found some really good spots. Uh, and then Racolette doesn't really care <laughs> that there's like another female from the family here. She's just continuing her pattern, her pattern nicheling responsibilities with those on fleek eyebrows of going through and trying to find all of the spots that the family might be able to have nest and they might be able to have berry bushes and other useful resources. All right, so all of that said, I kind of feel like the baby boys should possibly eat from the berry bushes, but maybe I'll only make two of them do it at a time. It's so hard! I hate to do it, but it just makes so much sense to try to get us a little bit closer each time to uh, unlocking that toxic body. So I think Moronu definitely would have a terrible addiction to it. And uh, no, uh, Manuro, that's what I get for giving them names that were so similar, might kind of like guide his little brother and like toss his little brother up to their, their family and be like, we got to get him out of the way. I just don't know what to do about these. I'm not strong enough to like dig them up. And I think that Malari would be quite upset to have one of her sons addicted to toxic berries. Uh, but it does happen. It does happen. All right. And then Lilium. Lilium might come over here and she could actually see an F, D and E. She could actually have quite the interesting baby with this handsome Moronu. So we might actually make that happen because why not? So she might look into uh, a romance for that. Manuro, tragically upset that his identical twin brother is addicted to toxic berries, has found Lilium just kind of with her beautiful red eyes sneaking out of the grasses staring in the eyes and knowing the depths of darkness because she's kind of a little bit goth like that and lives inside of the swamp. So we'll leave them be. I think little Radish here is just going to do his best to kind of try to clean things up. 
uh, and take care of his little brother. He might try exploring from this side, so we'll let him kind of explore up this direction. And then, oh, we have mud? What? Magnolia! Can you, like, climb in that mud? I'm gonna have to investigate that a little bit. <gasps> and did we just have a, an albino nicheling? Kuvan! Whoa! No, he's not albino! He's a snowberry! Guys, we have snowberry! Look at him! Oh my gosh, he's beautiful! He is all white, and he is not an albino nicheling, and he's actually white on white patterned. Is he big body too? I think these are like signs that maybe we're going to veer away from smell seeking because smell seeking has guided us to toxic berries and we're going to become like focused on gathering up icy genes instead, which is ironic because I was thinking about bringing the Yukir tribe back next week and going back into the old version of the game to finish up with the Yukir's journeys because it's so much harder in the old version of the game than the new one. Oh my gosh, but he actually, I know it's really hard to see, but he does, woo, there we go. I can get you right up in his nostrils if you guys want. He has white on white spots. That's so interesting. And he's beautiful. Oh my gosh. Snowberry, hi. You're quite the, the attractive little guy. Well, I think he's definitely quite different than what this like family was expecting. And in fact, I wonder... He's Magnolia's mate! He would be perfect for Magnolia! She has waited all this time for Snowberry and she just didn't know it! Oh my goodness, we might let them have some babies and all of a sudden we have Snow White nichelings that maybe have some peppermint smelling siblings who will be headed to mountainy areas instead of jungle. Who knew this was going to be the twist that we would take? But I think Camembert would be quite excited and quite proud of his young son and would try to get him a fish. No such luck with the fish. There we go, and we'll have Mulberry go ahead and get ready to have another child. I think she would be shocked, and her son smells odd, but technically, he because he has spots, uh, he does somewhat fit the berry profile, but not quite. He doesn't have the coloration that would indicate much of a scent. I mean, it's not like snow really has a strong smell, you know what I mean? All right, so let's see what's going on over here. Suji? 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 There's a rogue male? There's a rogue male in my astronom- uh, under my administration tree? What? What did I just miss? This is truly like a family drama. What? Wait a second, Strawberry, are you pregnant with, with Bush's child or not? Oh my gosh, I don't know. And oh my gosh, <gasps> these ears, this beautiful patterning. I don't even know what to say about this little guy. He has hemophilia. Maybe we can give him, can, can you not have hemophilia, please? Is that something that I can change in you? Uh, not until we get to generations, gosh darn. He's really gorgeous though. Um, wow. Well, it's very exciting to see Zizi. We're gonna go ahead. Well, actually, that kind of sounds like a feminine name. Let's go with, um, oh, that is listed as a girl's name under the guys, or under the person who, like, listed this. Let's go ahead and we're gonna have, uh, Konoji. So this is little Konoji. Holy moly, he's amazing. He's adorable. There's something precious about him that just makes me want to scoop him up in my arms and cuddle him. I think he might like eating nuts and uh, kind of zipping all over the place. Wow, we had a rogue male. Didn't even see him coming. Didn't even see where he happened to show up. And poor Suji is going to have the child of a rogue male. I can't believe that. Oh my gosh. Falky is going to step over here. Strawberry is just quite content and kind of in charge of her nest and Bush is very happy to try to help her defend it from bunnies and take care of keeping the grass nice and neat around it. Um, Rogue Vale? <laughs> Didn't expect that. Maybe that's what Parmesan is actually looking for. <laughs> Vanta will help out with gathering, uh, definitely gathering from all of the, um, the nuts that are popping around the place. And then Renini will go ahead and she will become pregnant with the next child with Vihu because I am definitely not letting a rogue n male near her. But what the heck? This is quite dramatic. I think Vihu and Renini are beginning to feel like things are spiraling out of their control. Also, I need to keep an eye on how many nichelings we have. I usually force myself to limit when we come to about 
30 because otherwise things get a little out of hand. And then Mina, she doesn't have a big nose, so I don't think she would really be that interested in the toxic berries, but we might let her do some exploring. She This this side of the island is literally just for exploring, if I'm completely honest. All right, so we'll scooch them up there. And then we might let, uh, we'll go ahead and let Parmesan be super excited that she found a couple good spots. Ooh, and there's some more stuff over here. And we might let Rock and Let go ahead and explore over here a little bit. Her son might want to join her. Aha! Uh -huh. And he found a cluster of berry bushes. Uh, but they're toxic berry bushes. So noted. Alright, so yeah, these guys are kind of like not even really part of the family anymore. We're just sort of using them to explore. Alright. And then over here, Kalari. <gasps> Another toxic berry bush! Oh, this truly is a very dangerous area. We'll have to be very, very careful with this. But Kalari and Huckleberry are going to be thinking about having children, but I feel like Kalari would be a little distressed about the idea of having children next to so many toxic berry bushes. Because even if there's a tree, because this is quite dangerous to let the young ones near, they might become addicted to toxic berries, which Malari has just discovered is tragedy upon tragedy in the household. And she is young enough that she might be thinking, well, if I can find another, another mate, she might take Huckleberry as a mate. D and C. F and G, who knows, maybe. Um, there's not really any other males nearby that she could possibly take as a, a good mate. But I think Malari would be very upset about this and want to destroy the berry bushes that are taking her son from her. Just like poor Rose Frost. But we'll have to see what happens. Oh my goodness, I did not expect to have as many dramatic twists this time as we did. Uh, what does the next day hold for us, please? <gasps> Our first predator! What the heck? Oh no! Mina! Oh dearie me! We haven't had a predator on this island this whole time and now we do? Oh my gosh. And here is another... Oh my gosh, she's a little skunk. <gasps> she's beautiful. She's beautiful in everything we've ever wanted for this tribe. She literally looks like a little skunk. We're gonna name her... We're gonna name her... Oh, come on. She's so cute. She even has two velvet paws. I don't even know what to do with her, but she does look just like a little skunk. We're going to name her uh, Skunkette. <laughs> That's the best I've got off the top of my head. But what a twist. We've got little Skunkette. Once again, I think Strawberry is sort of slightly taken back to have a child that is a patterned nicheling. I mean, she's not she's not a patterned nicheling herself. She's a, a strawberry. But I do think the berry line is beginning to quickly nosedive. And we're losing out on the berry line, gaining on the patterned nichelings until rogues got involved. And definitely gaining, as long as they aren't addicted to berry bushes, on the uh, on the peppermint tribe. So I do feel like very tragically we've got Moronu here addicted to those those toxic berries. We can't destroy them because nobody's strong enough. And I think that little Zomai is also kind of addicted to them. He's just a young little guy. We're halfway to toxic body at least. And nobody really has the strength to destroy these berry bushes. So having having the strength to get rid of them so that we don't have a tribe completely addicted to these toxic berry bushes is definitely an important next step. So let's see. All right, I think Strawberry is so confused. She's like, but I don't have patterned babies. I wonder what on earth is going on. And then Bush will go ahead, continue to chase away any threat to his mate's uh, nest. And then, oh, Valkyrie can come on over and he is now being adopted into the patterned side of the tribe because he is a pattern nicheling, so he can help out with the administrative duties. All right, and then Suji will fix up this old nest. <gasps> is this him? It's the rogue male, you guys! He's not that bad looking because he kind of matches a lot of things, but he's not really welcome. Um, let's take a peek at his jeans. D and D, violet eye recessive. I mean, he's not terrible, but he's not really welcomed either. And I feel like, I feel like Suji. I don't know. Should I attack him? Uh, he is double up immunity, and he could get a six. So I do think she would attack him. Everybody nearby would go on the offensive, and Suji will jump get away from us into the nest. <laughs> My females will jump into the nest in just a second here. 
Uh, and I feel like Vue would be very concerned and upset about things because it seems like that the guy is coming for our coming for our nuts and coming for our food. He's raiding the administrative tree. How dare he? Leaving behind his own contribution to the genes. Uh, and then we've got a little Mina here who might just want to run for it. She doesn't really have to fight this guy. The Berina is right here. She only has one strength. There's not really a point in this fight other than to do a very, very quick check. Whoops. I forgot she was just a little one. She didn't have that third ability to ride. I'm sorry, little Mina. But I was going to have her do a quick check to make sure there wasn't a baby Berina that we could invite into the tribe to get the genes from. Oh, dear me. That's so sad. I didn't mean to leave her to his, his like, mercy. He's going to eat her. Oh, dear. All right. Well, let's see. Rockalette. Uh, she's mostly just chasing bunnies. It seems like bunnies is really the way to go with our smell seekers. And Parmesan. She has found the nest, but now she needs to find the man. And she just, she tried to beat up a mole. She's found a toxic berry bush. There's a lot of toxic berries here. I do feel like any babies who would run across them would, would possibly get addicted to the toxic berries. And then Snowberry steps through the bushes and Magnolia might, for the first time in her life, meet a nicheling who looks somewhat like her. So I imagine, no, get out of the water! <laughs> now I'm gonna drown her. Oh my gosh, I am not on top of it apparently. Um, my goodness gracious. Well, and let's go ahead, try to get that fish. Camembert is gonna get out of the water. <laughs> oh my gosh, apparently I'm really not on it, but I'm going to try. Camembert is collecting the twirly diddly do grass to offer to uh, the beautiful mulberry as a decorative piece for their nest. And then Lilium, I feel like Lilium just irresponsibly goes around and, and kind of leaves babies behind to raise themselves in the swamp. All right, Moronu, should I have him? Uh, I mean, I can have him try to chase away with his ram horns, I think he can chase away these bunnies. And I think, I wonder how much strength you have to have to get rid of the actual toxic berry bushes. Because I feel like unless we destroy them, any babies born nearby might get attracted to the toxic berries and eat them. Which I think would make Kalari want to keep moving and not really stay under this tree. She's not a pattern nicheling. It's not her responsibility to make sure there's enough food for everybody. So we'll go ahead and have them keep moving a little bit. Is there anything their noses can find? Okay, is that a toxic berry bush or a normal berry bush? A normal berry bush! I think she would be much more amiable to the idea of having their baby over here and then maybe being able to send Huckleberry to collect nuts and hopefully having a hero come and destroy the toxic berries and get rid of them before, before too much tragedy befalls the family. But they have now discovered toxic berries are very addictive and dangerous for young nichelings. But all right, guys, let's go ahead and see what kind of interesting influx of babies we are about to have. Um, did not expect that rogue to show up because we haven't had a rogue for so long and did not expect the predator to show up because we haven't had one for so long on this island. Let's see what happens. That was a lot of noise. Oh my goodness. <laughs> We have little Rota, the rogue child, who actually has a little bit of strength, which is kind of interesting. And he's scentless. I didn't even think about that. How strong their scent is, is definitely something that would make the tribe members more attractive to some than the other. We also have a bunny invasion going down over here. Oh my gosh, we definitely need to remove some of these bunnies. I think that would make Magnolia super happy. Let's get Magnolia out of the water. I'm glad she isn't drowning. Thank goodness. I don't need her to drown. Get out of the water, Magnolia. And she would be very excited about this bunny invasion. <gasps> And Mulberry has just given birth to a beautiful berry baby. So she would feel a little bit com more confident, I think, after having had Snowberry to have a baby who smells properly like a half-rotten strawberry. That's the way of the world in this family, after all. We do still have our poor berry bush addicts. I am so sorry, little guys. But thankfully, their sacrifice is contributing to the ever-important ability of unlocking those genes. We can have so many pretty colors when we finally do that. Moronu, I'm so sorry. 
<laughs> I'm so sorry that you're addicted to these berries, buddy. I am so sorry that you're just like chasing one berry bush down after another. I know it's a tragedy for your family. And then we've got another baby born back here. <gasps> a beautiful baby boy who actually looks a lot like his father Huckleberry, except without the spit snout. So he's just got normal short snout. Very attractive little guy right there. I think that Kalari would be quite proud, but a little surprised to have a berry smelling child instead of a peppermint smelling child. Whereas meanwhile over here, <laughs> Lilium has had her daughter <laughs> and we finally have the bush destroyer. This little one coys with a big nose, claw, ram horns, and big body may be the savior of all of the young Mishlings who are dying left and right to these toxic berry bushes because she, alone on this island, is strong enough to destroy those toxic berries. So there you go, guys. Oh my goodness. We've had we've now had the berry bush destroyer born. We have got romance going on. I think it's going to be kind of a race against time to see which one of our nichelings, which one of the groups, the three very distinctive groups, we are going to end up seeing reach the north and kind of carry on the tribe. I'm shocked that Ramon's family is clearly so genetically strong. I'm really curious about our little snowy family that we have going on over here. And I am so in love with our little runescape family that we've got going too. So, whew. We've got to go through and kind of check on what everybody is doing, what we might want to mutate in, how we might want to run away from certain death, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye!